Mike Phillips here, 3D Garage in sunny Stewart, Florida. I have a unique project I'm tackling and I'm going to try to share some of this with a video. So what I have here, these are a set of weld forged custom wheels. These are the rear wheels. They're fairly wide because this car, they're going on a 1955 Chevy Bel Air and it's been tubs for some big fatties in the back. Okay. Over here are the front wheels, a little smaller, a little thinner. Okay. And you can see that these have a painted uh, face to the spokes and the rest of the wheel is polished. So I'm going to go ahead and coat the front and also the back. And the reason I'm doing this is simply to make them uh, easier to wash, clean and dry moving forward. Uh, now to do this, this, the process is actually going to be real simple. Uh, these things are new out of the box, light dust. They got fingerprints for everybody that's touched them and handled them. But I'm going to use the 3D pink car soap to wash them, just like you wash a car or wash some wheels. And the unique thing about this car wash soap is it doesn't contain any carnauba, silicones, polymers, built-in waxes, ceramics, none of it. It's just pure cleanings. And it is formulated to rinse clean or rinse free, leaving no film behind, which is important when you're getting ready to do a coating. So after I've washed them and dried them, then I'm going to wipe them down with the 3D wipe. This is a panel prep. It's going to ensure the surface is ready for the bonding of the coating. And then I'm going to apply the brand new 3D graphene infused coating. So stay tuned and I'll just show you step by step how I prep these wheels and then coat these wheels and get them ready to go on the beautiful 55 Chevy Bel Air. So I really like these uh, microfiber chenille wash mitts. Um, not only do they do a good job cleaning, but what I like about them is when you wash them, uh, as they swish around the washer, all the contaminants seem to come off these little alien caterpillar worm things. And the most important thing when trying to take care of your car, or as I'm working on here, a wheel finish, is to always be touching it with things that are clean and uncontaminated. And um, I talk about this all the time, but the reason we like microfiber is because it's so good at pulling things off the finish, like a spray detailer, spray wax, coating, prep, compound polish. I mean, it works better than traditional cotton towels, uh, t-shirts, diapers, or any kind of rag. So that's why we like microfiber. It's, it excels at adsorbing and absorbing. Um, but in the same way, it excels at grabbing and pulling things off the paint, like a compound or polish. It also excels at grabbing and holding contaminants, okay, like sticks, leaves, dead bugs, rocks, dirt, you know, brake, brake dust particles, anything. And then once they embed into the weave, then it's really hard to get them out. So if you, if you don't uh, have proper protocols in place to wash and take care of your a microfiber towels, wash mitts, drying towels, whatever they may be, anything that basically touches the paint, then you're going to get contaminants built up and when you go to use them, you're going to scratch whatever you're touching. So what I've always told people is it takes hours to buff out a car and it only takes seconds to put scratches back in. And that's because the things you touch the paint with are contaminated. Okay, so now after just a, a thorough but gentle washing, and I went ahead and washed the inside of the rim, even though I'm not going to coat it, but you know, while I'm here, I might as well clean it. It's kind of what OCD detailers do is we clean everything. <laughs> I clean these tables before I put the wheels on them. Okay, so this is back side. Okay, then a couple things that uh, I paid attention to when I was cleaning these wheels, washing them, was not only to wash the face, the inside of the rim, the back of the rim, the back of the spokes, the face of the wheel, but also the sides. These have a fairly substantial uh, side or width to the spokes themselves. So rubbing the towel in here, all the way around each one of these openings here to make sure that they're totally clean. Now here's something I discovered in hindsight, and that was the face of these wheels have a little sticker that say weld on them. And they have the address, the domain name for the company. And it says made in the USA. And that's, that's nice. Uh, I mark my stuff too. But when I pull them off, it left a little residue. But fear not, 
3D's gum and tar remover, uh, applied a little bit to a clean microfiber towel, and then pulled that residue off before I washed the wheels. And a little tip while I'm here about using gum and tar removers. What I see most people do is they apply the product to a towel, then they go and start rubbing on whatever adhesive or sticky stuff they want to get off. And actually, the correct technique is to apply the gum and tar remover to the towel, press it against the adhesive that's left behind after you remove a sticker, and just hold it there for like 30 seconds and let the solvents dwell and penetrate, and then they will dissolve and emulsify the adhesive, making it easier to wipe off so you don't sit there and scrub, potentially putting marring or scratches in. So a little technique tip for using the gum and tar remover. Okay, so I've got these things washed. Next thing to do is um, I just have some clean, inspected, uh, we call these black wheel and tire towels uh, at 3D. We have four different colors. We've got blue, yellow, um, green, and black. And the color coding is really simple. Um, black is for wheels and tires, like if you want to wipe the dressing off. People seem to get really upset if they take a light colored towel, wipe off the tire dressing, stain the towel black from the carbon in the tire and maybe the dressing, anything else. And then when they wash it, it doesn't come clean. So to solve that problem, just get a gray or black colored towel. <laughs> And they'll still get stained, it just won't bug you as much. Um, then, of course, the, uh, the other color coding, blue is for glass windows, uh, yellow is for interiors, green is for paint care. So, you know, just in keeping with the color code system here at 3D, I'm using the correct color towel. And then, um, for what I'm doing here today, I'll wash these and reuse them. Now, uh, if I were to use these on a set of wheels, and I do hand wash wheels with individual towels, a set of brushes and wash mitts, uh, the problem or the issue that you can run into when uh, cleaning wheels that have been on a car that's driven is every time you hit the brakes, the brake pads engage with the rotor and particles come off. Now it doesn't matter if they're steel brakes or steel rotors with brake pads or if they're some other material, particles come off and like I was just saying they're going to embed into the weave. So really for washing really expensive wheels that you want to maintain and keep clean, it's almost kind of worth it to use one towel per wheel, and after you've washed it, dispose of it. Because <laughs> uh, you don't want to wash with the other towels, because if there are particles from the brakes on the towel, they're going to contaminate all the towels you have in that wash load. And you can't trust that everything is going to wash out, say if you wash it by yourself. So if you use it again, you risk scratching the beautiful finish. And um, all you seasoned and experienced detailers understand when I say that to try to go in here and polish scratches out of the spokes or the rims, not only is it not fun, it's time consuming, it takes a lot of work. So, you know, it's, it's cheaper by far just to use a dedicated towel to clean your rims and then find something else to do with it than it is to use a contaminated towel because you don't know it's contaminated and risk marring or scratching the face of the wheel. So, you know, you can do it however you want to. I'm just trying to share some tips on how to be proactive in preventing damage in the first place. Okay, so let me go ahead and finish drying these other wheels and we'll get up, we'll get set up to go ahead and start prepping them uh, with a 3D wipe. The next step after carefully washing and drying the rims is to go ahead and re-clean them or prep them for the coating. Now for this I'm using the 3D wipe and um, I'm going to start at the back and for the back because it's quite a bit larger I'm going to go ahead and spray the product directly onto the rim. When I go to the front I'm just going to dampen the towel. Um, I always like to uh, dampen the side that's going to hold my hand first. Uh, it actually makes it a little easier to hold the towel instead of a dry towel. And then I'm just going to come in and just give it a thorough wipe. Now, remember, these are brand new, and I went ahead and washed them with a soap that doesn't leave anything behind. So theoretically, I could probably coat them right after washing and drying because there's nothing on the rims. But as an extra ounce of protection, I'm gonna go ahead and prep these with the wipe to give the coating you know, maximum bonding efficiency, basically is what that would be. Okay, so there's the back, wiped down with prep. And as you see back here, I got a couple towels set up, so, and I actually dampened them with water, so they kind of stick to the table, and then they keep the rim from rolling too far or off the table. Now to do the front here, I don't, since the back is cleaned, 
if I spray the wipe in there, it's going to get overspray on the back. Not a big deal. I can just go back and rewipe it. But instead, uh, here's another example of how to work smarter instead of harder. Dampen my towel and then just come in here and use the product on the towel to gently wipe this finish down. By the way, these, thing, these wheels came with factory installed uh, rubber uh, valve stems. And I'm going to recommend to the owner when he goes to have the tires installed to, to pay the few extra dollars more to have the bolt-in, the chrome bolt-in um, valve stems installed. And the reason for that is because over time, the valve stems, when they're exposed to ozone in the air, plus just normal you know, heat, sunlight, moisture in the form of rain, the rubber breaks down. And anytime you're cleaning a wheel, you want to be careful if you like jam your hand or a brush into it, you could break it off. You put the bolt, chrome bolt-in ones in, got a little bit more uh, safety precaution there. The um, last thing you want to do is come out to a really cool ride and find a flat tire because the valve stem went bad. Okay, so now I've cleaned or I've prepped both sides of this. So now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and apply the graphene infused coating. Now, when you buy this as a kit, it comes with the coating, a foam applicator block, and a little, a couple of suede patches of um, a cloth to wrap around the block, then to apply the coating. And while I, I could use this, you know, it's, and it has a soft compressible foam side here, which you actually put the patch against. Um, it's going to be kind of awkward and cumbersome. So instead, what I like to do is I take a, I take a coating applicator everywhere I go with me that's flexible and it can get into in intricate areas. Here it is. It's my hand. <laughs> and uh, here's actually the suede patch. I've already cleaned, prepped, and coated these other three wheels. I saved this one for the video. Um, but this way I can get into all the little, uh, the gentle curves of the rim, the the spokes. So I'm just going to put some of the coating right onto the applicator pad right there. And then just come in here and I want to do the backside first. And there's a reason for that. Um, even though I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to wipe all the, I'm going to spread the coating out, level it, and then wipe any excess off. Um, if I were to miss a spot, I'd rather do the back, the front last instead of the front. Um, just in case there was a, um, a high spot anywhere, it would, it would be on the back, not the front. And uh, just a level of precaution. Start at the back, then move to the front. And um, for this, you know, basically just take and massage this into this beautiful aluminum finish. And I spoke with the head chemist at 3D about this process. And he said, yes, the coating will bond to any clean, smooth surface. So I have it from the chemist that we can use this on these polished aluminum wheels. But he did say the real key was the prep work. And isn't that always the thing? It's always the prep work that gets you to the final results. In this case, the final results are beauty and protection, but also that hydrophobic surface that'll make cleaning, this, cleaning these fast and easy. In fact, with this coating on here, my guess is, as long as he has a, a really good spray nozzle with like a, a jet setting, he will be able to um, just take and blast these wheels and get them clean, you know? So, okay, so here's a clean microfiber towel. And, um, you know, you're supposed to wait 30 seconds. If I were to time myself from when I started here and then move to the inside, it's already past 30 seconds. So I'm not too concerned about that. Plus, I'm going to come back and put a second coating on these after 30 minutes have gone by. Uh, probably do that off camera, but I, I've already done two coats on the other three wheels. So I will do it to this fourth wheel. And the biggest reason for the second layer is in part to kind of give a substantial layer of graphene ceramic coating protection, but also it's the age old um, reason of ensuring 100% uniform coverage over the entire surface. And uh, that's why a lot of times back in the old days, people say, well, how many coats of wax should I put on? And, you know, the answer is two, what most people would say, but the, there's really no reason to put two coats of wax on except to make sure that you got every square millimeter of paint on your car coated with some wax to protect it. But what I always do is if you just slow down, take your time, 
and do a good job with the first coat, you don't need to put on a second coat. I and mean, that applies to car waxes, but for this coating, not to confuse you, I do want to put on two coats, but it's for the same reasons, to uh, build up a substantial layer of graphene ceramic protection, but also to make sure every square inch has been uh, coated, and that'll make blasting and cleaning these with water faster, easier, and safer. Okay, so we're gonna reposition these towels so this thing don't roll around. Okay, same thing. Okay, so I'm actually gonna flip over to the other side here, and this will be the face of the wheel. And I'm going to start with the spokes. And then just uh, work my way around. This is fairly tedious right here. I want to get this outer or this inner portion of the lip because there's a portion of it that does have black paint. And I'm going to go ahead and get around where the lug nuts in insert. And anybody that's ever cleaned any amount of wheels, you know what a pain it is to clean the part of the wheel around the lug nuts and the center cap. So coating these uh, will make it, like the rest of the wheel, faster and easier to clean. Okay, now just to make sure I've got ample coating, I'm going to go ahead and apply some more and then get this major portion of the, uh, the rim here coated. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, there's always some confusion about coating rims. And uh, it's mostly not on the part of professional detailers, it's on the part of the uh, car owner who a lot of times doesn't know that much about detailing. They just know how to start the car and drive it. And that's normal, but that's, and it's okay. <laughs> uh, some people are gravitated towards detailing cars, which is tedious, hard work, and some people are happy to pay someone else to do it. But here's what the confusion is. Okay, I feel like I've gone over that really good. So even though I've gone over this really well, I mean, this is why I want to come back and put a second coat on, just to make sure. It's just insurance, you know. But here's the thing I just want to point out. A lot of confusion over this one topic. And the topic is, um, if you ceramic coat a set of wheels in someone's car, does that mean now they won't get dirty? Now they won't get any brake dust on them? And the answer is no, of course not. They're still going to get dirty, and they're still going to get a buildup of brake dust. The difference is, is once you have your rims coated, the brake dust, any dirt, is going to um, release easily when you wash it or spray it with water. Uh, another thing that builds up on rims that I talk about all the time is traffic film or road film. Um, I always called it road film, but uh, my travels over to Waxstock in Belgium and Germany and talking to other professional detailers across the pond, they call it traffic film. But same thing. What traffic film is, or road film, whatever you want to call it, is... If you live in an area where it rains, and some people don't, like sunny Southern California, but if you live in a place where it rains, what happens is, in the same way that all the cars that drip oil in a parking lot, so next time you go to any store, if you look in the parking spaces, in the middle of the parking spaces, it's dark where the cars drip transmission fluid, motor oil, power steering fluid, brake fluid, antifreeze, you know, any of the fluids that make up the mechanical moving parts of a car. Um, in the same way that cars over time get, get leaks and drip into the parking spaces, um, cars also drip when you're driving down the road. And then here's what happens. Uh, maybe you go a few days, maybe a few weeks where it doesn't rain, so you've got all these cars dripping you know, fluids down the middle of the road. And that's why when you look down a road on a sunny day and it's this long straight road, it's darker in the middle. Follow me? It's darker where everything's leaking. But now when you drive in the rain, all that oily gunk mixes with the rainwater and the cars in front of you are churning it up and the car directly in front of you is throwing it onto your car, throwing it onto your rims, on your tires. And it's this dirty, oily film that builds up on the exterior of your car on everything, the glass, the paint, plastic trim, and rims and tires. It's called traffic film. And so um, when you coat your wheels, you ceramic or graphene ceramic coat your wheels, they're still going to get this build up a traffic film, but it's not gonna be able to bond. So again, like the loose brake dust or loose dirt, it will just flush off. Okay. So that's the back's been coated, the front's been coated with one coat, and technically I need to wait about 30 minutes to put the second coat on, which I will do off camera. Uh, but this will um, protect these uh, rims. It'll keep them looking good. It'll inhibit or at least slow down oxidation. 
uh, which is a common problem for aluminum uh, rims. And it's gonna make them look beautiful. And of course the water beating is gonna be insane. It's just gonna, the water's gonna beat up. And again, when you wash it, everything's gonna flush off easily. So that, my friends, is how you ceramic coat a set of rims. After coating the rim, it's also important, just like if you're working on a car, to take a swirl finder light and come in and inspect for high spots. And then at that moment, if discovered, go ahead and what I usually do is reapply some coating to my applicator, just massage it over the high spot and then quickly wipe it off. There's a window of time you have where before that coating fully sets up, sometimes you can you know, just reliquify it and level it out. If you wait too long, like you come back the next day and you find a high spot, chances are you're gonna to have to polish it off and then recoat it. So if you're gonna install coatings, invest in a quality handheld scroll finder light. That looks good. You can get all these products at 3dproducts.com.